the maritime coast of New Brunswick, a part of Canada that makes its living from the sea. Illegal fishing or poaching is a direct threat to the livelihoods of the people in this area. Fortunately, they have a clever and skillful protector. Jake works with John Stewart, an officer for Fisheries and Oceans Canada. Jake and John are constantly on the lookout for evidence of illegal fishing. Jake's determination and powerful sense of smell allows him to track poachers from the water's edge through any kind of terrain, secure the evidence, run the poachers down, and make an arrest. But Jake's more than just a police dog. He's a traveling spokesperson for John's work. I do a lot of community service or PR work, I guess, with the dog, especially the school programs, Cubs. When it comes to a police dog, they just are in awe. And it makes it stick in their minds, I guess. They remember the police dog, and then they also remember what we were talking about. Oh, that dog is used to help protect the environment, or fish, or, or the resources. How can you tell the difference between the two? John tells the kids about threats to their local ecology, but of course all they want to hear about is how Jake catches the bad guys. Or bad guys that do things illegally and stealing the resort. Jake has been on the job for six years now, but one of his toughest cases came when he was just a rookie. Store owner Dennis Moss remembers. 3.30 in the afternoon on a Thursday, uh, two men entered our store wearing masks and, and carrying a sawed-off shotgun. They took uh, my general manager to the cash register and, and held the shotgun on him and, and made him give him the money. As soon as they had left, he called the police. Fortunately for Moss, the closest police unit was the team of Jake and John. This was bad news for the thieves. John and Jake were in the area, so the pursuit of, of them happened very rapidly. Uh, they actually uh, pursued him into some bushes, and uh, John uh, and Jake, they uh, captured and recovered uh, all of the money except for uh, just a few cents. So. Uh, so that was his first major bust, if what we call it sometimes. And uh, he made a name for himself right then and there. Uh, and everything started going from there. He bonded really quick with me. And I bonded with him really quick because we both had a natural, how would you call it, uh, affection for each other. It was love at first sight, that's what it comes down to, I guess. It won't be too long before Jake will have to retire from active duty. John and trainer Al Cox are already looking for a dog to replace him. But Jake's not an easy act to follow. By doing this, we try to see if they're inquisitive enough to, to follow it and, and discover and chase. They want to find out what's around the corner. You don't want an overly aggressive dog because they're quite a, quite a handicap in the resource protection law enforcement end of things. And you don't want a dog that's too shy and won't protect his master. Middle of the road is great. You mark one and you visit them every four or five days to see if the decision is right. But until his replacement is found and trained, Jake will stay on the job by land, sea, and even in the air. Jake has become a prized member of this community. Every month, like clockwork, Jake and John pick up a grateful Dennis Moss's reward for Jake's detective work six years ago. Moss has pledged to provide Jake's food for the rest of his life.
mark it on the calendar. Got a bag right around yep. here. Although Jake will be retiring from police work, John has no intention of splitting up a partnership that's so deep and that's lasted so long. I think he'll adjust to retirement pretty easy because he knows he's loved and he also knows that he's in his home area. That he will be with me until he dies. That's just the way it is. I have to kind of say that, that, uh, that he's my partner and he'll be my partner until the end.